Listening one. Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, my name's Ivan Magnuson. I'm your trainer for this two-day course. A course, as you know, called International Customer Service. Um, to begin, I just want to explain quickly what I do, and then you can talk about your jobs. So, I'm an export consultant. I specialise in services. Listening to. My name's Ella Grady. I'm in the customer service department. I'm the European customer service manager. So, um, I look after customer service for Europe. So, are you in charge of the department? I'm not the department manager, no. I report to the customer service manager. He's in charge of the department. She reports to me. Ah, the boss is here. <laughs> I'm afraid so. And is your boss here? No, she isn't on the course, fortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I see. So, Ella, you aren't the department manager, but do you have a team in the department? Yeah, I manage a small team of assistants, five people. They're not all here, just two of them. Right. And how big is the region you look after? We're responsible for customers in Europe. Um, 18 countries altogether. And do you have direct contact with customers? Do you speak to them? Oh, yes. The difficult ones, usually. <laughs> <laughs> I deal with problems most of the time. So, you deal with difficult customers? Quite a lot, yes. She has a difficult boss as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. Listening three. One. Of. I'm in charge of the department. Two. Four. I am responsible for customers. Three. Two. I report to the department manager. L listening for. Okay, next I want to give you some examples of bad customer service in hotels. Why hotels? Well, I have a secret job, a part-time job. I'm a spy. I know I don't look like James Bond, but it's perfectly true. I work for a hotel company. It's a chain of hotels. There are about ten other people who do this job. I'm not the only one. And we check customer service in the hotels we stay in. When I travel on business, I stay in a hotel that's in the chain. So, as a spy, I check the quality of service. And after my stay, I write a report. Uh, it doesn't take long. And in return, my room's free. I don't pay. So, people who do this, people like you, do it part-time. They travel a lot. That's right. Obviously, you have to stay in hotels a lot. For me, it's good because I travel with my job as a trainer and also I'm in customer service, so... You're the perfect secret agent. <laughs> yeah, and I enjoy it. I don't like the paperwork, but the rest is good fun. OK, let's look at some examples of bad customer service. Listening 5 is the trade fair in Montreal? Where are your offices? When does the fair start? Do they make computers? L listening 6 So, you make plastic animals? That's right. Uh, all life-size. Cows, horses, sheep. They're very realistic. Mm. Oh, and they move. 
Their heads move. They make sounds. If you just touch them, <coughs> oh! <laughs> they don't walk. Our customers prefer them to stay in one place. Yes, right. So, who are your customers? Where do you sell these things? We sell a lot to fun parks, shopping centers, playgrounds. Children all over the world love them. We export to 25 countries. Really?、Mm. I manage a small fun park in Germany. It's for children up to 12 years old. Well, these are perfect for that age. We have a lot of customers in Germany. We work with a company called DDA in Frankfurt. They install our products and look after maintenance and after-sales service for all our German customers. Right. So, what country are you from? <laughs> from Canada.、Oh. We have a factory near Montreal. We manufacture all our products there. Oh, I see. Can I just? <laughs> sure. Listening seven. Broccoli. Carrot. Chicken. Dessert. Haddock. Potato. Salad. Salmon. Vegetable. Strawberry. Tomato. Listening eight. One. Everything okay? Yes, fine, thanks. Excellent. Can I get you anything else to drink or to eat? Nothing for me. I'm fine, thanks. Ivan? No, thanks. I'm full, thank you. I think we're all okay. I think it's time to get back. Actually, could we have the bill, please? Sure. Two. Hello. Hello. We have a reservation. The name's Magnuson. A table for three. Yes. Okay. If you'd like to come this way, please. Thanks. Three. Dessert. Yes. Could I have the apple pie, please? Apple pie. Just a coffee for me, please. Would anyone else like coffee? I'll have one after my dessert. Okay. Would anyone else like dessert? Four. Are you ready to order? Yes. For me, um, to start the tomato soup, please. Yes, the same for me, please. The tomato soup. What would you like for the main course? I'd like salmon with rice and peas, please. The lamb with peas and carrots for me, please. Ivan, I don't want a starter, just a main course. Can I have steak, chips, and peas, please? How would you like the steak?、Um, medium, please. Listening nine. So, where are you working exactly in France? In the Jura. It's not far from Switzerland. Right. And you're building a hotel. We're converting a farmhouse into a hotel. It's very um, <laughs> it's a very old house. When we started, it had no windows, no doors. <laughs> it was a ruin, basically. And now? Well, now most of the work's complete. I'm staying in one of the rooms, in fact. So um, I'm the first guest. You're the boss, though, so you're not paying. <laughs> oh, I'm paying. This project's costing a fortune. I see. Well, that's one of my questions, actually. What's your budget? 
Um, the total budget's 560,000 euros, and I'm paying half of that. Richard and Cathy Mills are paying the rest. They're my business partners. And your business partners are hotel managers, is that right? That's right. I'm managing the project, the construction, and they're still living and working in the UK at the moment, organising the website and the marketing material, you know, brochures and things. Then they plan to live here and manage the hotel when it's finished. I see. So, how long are you staying in France? What's the schedule from start to finish? Um, 18 months. And we're more or less on schedule. At the moment, we're working on the bathrooms. We're having one or two problems with... Listening 10. 1. Where are you working? 2. Are you managing the project? 3. What are they doing? L listening 11. So, the main thing is we want creative people. Mm, yes, and creative people who can work hard. We're looking for young people. It's probably their first job. They've got no experience. Um, so I think we need to make that clear. It's hard work and even little things. Getting to work on time in the morning, for example. The simple things are extremely important. We want reliable people. It sounds obvious, but... Yeah, we want people who are professional. That's... Yes, that's the word. What extra skills does a creative person need to be a professional? I mean, for example, we want them to work with different people as well, to change teams. That's one of our creative strategies, isn't it? We don't have the same people working together all the time. Yes, so they need to cope with change. To cope with stress. Sure. They need the confidence to present and explain ideas. That's true. And there's the problem of understanding what the clients want. It's not always clear. That's the manager's job, though. The creative team aren't responsible for analysing the client's needs. Later on, when we talk... Listening 12. 1. Reliable. 2. Confident. 3. Experienced. 4. Analytical. 5. Adaptable. 6. Creative. Listening 13. Marco works for PAF. He's in the creative department. We know him. He knows us. But uh, is that an advantage? Well, we want someone to manage the department. We need a manager to make the new strategy work. We don't really need new ideas. Marco's experienced, he knows the company well, and he knows what we want. I think his experience with PAF is a big advantage. Hiring someone new is... it's obviously a risk. Yeah, but making Marco the department manager is also a risk. OK, he enjoys working for the company. He's not going to leave suddenly. He's popular in the department, but... That doesn't mean he's good at managing a team. But the number one priority is the new strategy. The manager has to sell the new strategy to the team. We know Marco's a good salesman. He likes selling ideas. Yeah. But what about the other people in the department? They work with him at the moment. What happens if they have to work for him? Oh, I think he can cope with all that. Listening 14. Golf. Football. Baseball. Tennis. Basketball. Fishing. Weight training. Cycling. Cricket. 
rugby, bowling, surfing, skiing, hiking, chess, boxing, horse riding, knitting, judo, ice skating, scuba diving, jogging, aerobics, elephant polo, underwater hockey. Listening 15. So, are you watching the cup final this weekend? Um, no, I don't think so. Don't you like football? No, I can't stand it. Oh. Sorry to sound so miserable. Mm, I hate it too, but I watch the World Cup final. I can't play, that's my problem. I, I'm hopeless at it. Oh. If I'm not very good at a sport, I don't like watching it. So, what do you like then? I play golf. Oh, right. My husband plays. Huh. I'm not interested in it, though. It's not my cup of tea. <laughs> he plays golf. I go horse riding. Oh, right. Well, uh, you could play polo, <laughs> both of you. Mm. That's half horse riding, half golf. <laughs> I'd love to have a go at riding, actually. I bet it's good fun. Oh, it's great fun. So, do, do you have your own horse? No. I'd love to have one, but um, it's expensive. Yeah. I'm quite interested in tropical fish. <laughs> I'd like to have an aquarium. But it's a problem if you travel a lot. Tropical fish? Yeah. I'd like to have some piranhas. <laughs> piranhas? Well, they say a hundred piranhas can eat a horse in less than five minutes. Oh! I'm not sure if that includes the rider or not. But... Listening 16. One. It's great fun. Two. I'd love to have a go. Three. I hate it. Four. I can't stand it. Five. I'm hopeless at it. L listening 17. Marilyn, these are both top quality products. The quality's the same. I know, but they don't look the same. The one from Guild looks like a modern vacuum cleaner. This Aero... Aerosaurus. Yeah. It looks like something from the 1960s. Well, of course it does. It's a retro look. I know. But what do most customers want? Do they want to pay a reasonable price for a modern vacuum cleaner or pay more for something that looks 40 years old? Yes, but surely we don't want just another modern vacuum cleaner that's the same as all the other products we sell. We need something different. Okay, the Aerosaurus is more expensive, but it's different. And Santra is making a good offer. Look, 12% discount. Guild is only offering 5%. Santra is offering cheaper delivery as well. We can make a bigger profit margin. We can make a bigger margin. But we can only make a good profit if we sell enough vacuum cleaners. How many of these Aero... Sauruses can we sell? I mean, look at it. It looks like a dinosaur. <laughs> of course it does. That's why people will love it. Just listen to it. Listening 18. 1. Van. It's cheaper than the other. Two. As. It's not as cheap as the other. Listening 19. So, when you design an office, where do you start? 
Well, the first question is, how much space do you need? And that's one of the most difficult questions sometimes, because for most people, it's difficult to say, oh, I need 15 square meters, for example. So you have to look at what people need to do in the office. Look at what equipment they need. You know, most people need a phone, a computer, um, a desk. Then there's shared equipment. You normally have a room with a photocopier, printers, uh, a fax machine, possibly. A coffee machine? Oh, a coffee machine is essential. <laughs> it's important where you put it. Do you put it in a corridor with no windows or next to the toilets? You know, so people have short coffee breaks. Or do you have a nice coffee area with seats, big windows? <laughs> Daylight, that's a big consideration. Light's extremely important. So you want big windows if possible? Yeah, you usually want a lot of light. What do you think of open plan offices? Do you like that sort of design? Well, an open plan office isn't really a design, is it? It's just a big room. Um, but we're talking about the requirements for offices, and the most important question is money. You know, cost is always the biggest problem. At the end of the day, walls cost money. If they're not an essential requirement, then why have them? With anything that costs money, clients always ask, is it really necessary? Offices are expensive, even if you only have what's in the regulations, what's compulsory. So, if something's an optional extra... Listening 20. 1. How much space do you need? And that's one of the most difficult questions. 2. So you want big windows, if possible. 3. The most important question is money. You know, cost is always the biggest problem. 4. Walls cost money. If they're not an essential requirement, then why have them? 5. With anything that costs money, clients always ask, is it really necessary? 6. Officers are expensive, even if you only have what's in the regulations, what's compulsory. Listening 21 The Atlantic the Pacific, Africa, Europe, North America, Asia, Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, the Bahamas, Listening 22. So, what do you think of Hawaii? Fantastic. The beaches are amazing. We've got some good surfing beaches in New Zealand, but here it's... Well, the weather's a lot warmer. That's the first difference. At this time of year, anyway. Of course. It's winter in New Zealand, isn't it? Yeah. It'll soon be spring, though. I'd like to go, actually. Maybe not this year, but possibly next year. To New Zealand? Yeah. What's the best time of year to visit? Early summer's nice. Late December, early January. And what's the weather like? Pretty hot, usually. You can have Christmas dinner on the beach, no problem. But there's a lot more to do than just sit on a beach, obviously. Oh, sure. So, what are the best places to see? The nicest part of the country is the South Island, in my opinion, anyway. You go to the mountains there, the Southern Alps, and it's, oh, it's beautiful. So, do you need a car to travel around? Yeah. Or you can rent a camper van. That's what a lot of people do. There are hundreds of campsites where you can, you know, park and... Yeah, yeah. I know that area pretty well, so... So, can you recommend some campsites? Yeah, I can give you some good addresses. There's one campsite next to a lake. Listening 23. 1. 2. Where are the best places to go? 2. Of. What's the best time of year to visit? 
three. Can. Can you recommend some campsites? L- listening twenty four. So to start with, I want to talk about the bicycle, a very successful invention. Any ideas why? What are the main advantages of bikes? They don't cost much. Okay, they're not complicated. They're easy to use. Yeah. Not too easy when you're going uphill. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true.、Uh, let's say simple. Running costs are low. Okay, yeah, very cheap to run. They don't often break down. Yeah, reliable. They're safe.、Mm, well. <laughs> They're not too dangerous. Okay, so a successful invention for all those reasons, and with modern bikes, we have a good example of using the latest materials for a design that's over a hundred years old. L- listening twenty-five. So, to sum up, then. Why are bicycles popular? They're cheap, simple, economical and efficient, reliable and safe. Now, that checklist is the same, no matter what sport. L- listening twenty-six. There were lots of problems with the Sinclair C5. The biggest problem, I think, was. It was too small, and especially too low. Because it was so low, it was difficult for other drivers to see you. It was actually quite dangerous. And obviously, if you're very low and it's raining, then there's water splashing on you from cars. And then there was the battery. It was heavy. It wasn't very powerful. Every night you had to recharge it. I mean, forget it. Listening twenty-seven. So this is quite an easy project,、mm. certainly compared with the one we did last month at a chemicals factory.、Mm. It was、uh, quite a challenge. At a chemicals factory. Yeah, it was a marketing video for a chemicals company.、Uh-huh. They wanted to film different parts of the factory. The first problem was the heat.、Mm. It was—I don't know what the temperature was exactly, <laughs> but it was extremely hot. So it was difficult to work. Well, the trouble was, it was too hot for the camera. Oh right. So what did you do? We put the camera in a box to protect it. We made a box with a small hole in the front. Yeah. And we filmed with the camera in the box. And did it work? Yeah, it worked okay. So how did you make the box? What did you use? Just wood, nothing complicated.、Oh. So anyway, we finished filming in this hot area, and then they wanted us to film with no light.、Oh. They had another production process where they couldn't have any light at all. It was completely black, and they wanted you to film it. Yeah. <laughs> so what did you say? I said no. It's impossible. <laughs> They thought maybe we could use a special camera or something, but、um, it, it wasn't possible. So filming in your offices isn't a big problem. <laughs> well, after that, no. So when can you start setting up the shots? Listening thirty-three. One. Peak periods. Two. Leaflet or booklet. Three. History. Four. Map. Five. Souvenir. Six. Museum. Seven. Guided tour. Listening thirty-four. One. Hi. Hello. Do you have any information about Alcatraz? Any booklets or? Yes, just behind you on the shelf there. Ah, okay. 
Thank you. 2. Hi. Hi. Is there anywhere near here where you can buy gifts and... Yeah. If you turn right out of the door, then take the first right, there are gift shops all along the, the street there. OK. Thanks very much. 3. Can you visit the museum all day? What are the opening times? It opens at 10 and closes at 5. If you want to take a... They start every hour on the hour and last... I think they last 45 minutes, but I'll just check. 4. Excuse me, have you got any street? Sure. Thanks. How much are they? They're free. Listening 35. Hi. Hello. Do you have any information about Alcatraz? Any booklets or leaflets? Yes, just behind you, on the shelf there. Ah, okay. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Is there anywhere near here where you can buy gifts and souvenirs? Yeah. If you turn right out of the door, then take the first right, there are gift shops all along the, the street there. OK. Thanks very much. Can you visit the museum all day? What are the opening times? It opens at 10 and closes at 5. If you want to take a guided tour, they start every hour on the hour and last... I think they last 45 minutes, but I'll just check. Excuse me, have you got any street maps? Sure. Thanks. How much are they? They're free. Listening 36. What do you think about the location of the resort near Berlin? Well, the reason it's there is simply because there was already a dome there. Tropical Islands Resort didn't build the dome. They bought it for quite a low price. Uh. A company called Cargo Lifter built the dome as a factory to make big airships. But Cargo Lifter went out of business and had to sell the dome. So Tropical Islands bought it and so they had very low construction costs. So. Do you think the resort will be successful in the long term? Possibly. I think it'll probably be quite popular in the short term, in the first few months. I think a lot of people will probably come to have a look. They'll want to see what it's like. After that, it depends what they think of it. Some people say this resort won't help to make forecasts for other resorts because there was no need to build a dome. Do you agree with that? Um. No. I think it'll help a lot. Definitely. The construction costs aren't difficult to calculate. The difficult question is what sort of people will visit the Dome. Mm. I'm sure it'll be popular with families with young children, for example. So the project will be good for getting information about the market. Do you think someone will build another Dome like this somewhere one day? It's possible, yeah. Maybe there's a huge market for them. I mean, it's not a completely new idea. There's already a dome like this one in Japan. Listening 37. 1. So, do you think the resort will be successful in the long term? 2. I think it'll probably be quite popular in the short term. 3. I think a lot of people will probably come to have a look. 4. They'll want to see what it's like. 5. So the project will be good for getting information about the market. L listening 38. 
Do you think we'll see a space tourism industry in the next five years? Is that realistic? I think so. Yeah, I'm not sure how big it'll be. It all depends how much it costs. You know, if a flight costs under fifty thousand、mm. dollars, I think there'll be a lot of demand. If tickets cost over five hundred thousand dollars, very few people will buy them. <laughs> Obviously, it'll be expensive. The question is, how expensive? Well, some people say two hundred thousand dollars is a realistic price. Hmm. Well, that's probably about right for a short-term objective. In the long term, I think the cost will need to be less than that, probably less than half that. What do you think space tourists will want? What sort of experience? Um, I think they'll want. I think it has to be a real space trip.、Mm. If it's too short, then people won't be happy. I don't think it needs to last for hours, but a couple of minutes won't be enough. It has to be worth the money. What do you think it will take to really make space tourism take off? If somebody shows that it's possible for a reasonable price, I think that'll be the start. If the first company is successful, a lot of others will follow. And obviously, the top priority is safety.、Mm. That's the big challenge to show that it's safe. Listening thirty nine. Glenair, good afternoon. How can I help you? Hello, I'd like to fly to Lisbon at the end of May. Lisbon. Yes. What date are you planning to leave? On May the twenty-fourth. May the twenty-fourth. Is it a return flight? A return? Yes. I want to come back on the thirty-first. The thirty-first of May. Oh. Okay, the cheapest fare is fifty-five pounds. That's for a return. Yes. Okay. Um, and can I change the date if I need to? No, for that fare you can't change the booking, and there's no refund if you cancel. Right. So fifty-five pounds. And are there any extra charges for airport tax or? No, that's included. Okay. Um. Oh. That's the other question. What's the maximum baggage allowance? Because I want to take a surfboard with me. Right. Well, the maximum allowance is twenty kilograms. The excess baggage charge is six pounds per kilogram. But for a surfboard. Listening forty. Okay. Can I book a seat then, please? Yes. Can I take your name, please? Sure, it's Simon Brigton. B R I G T O N. And Simon is S I M O N. That's right. And how would you like to pay? Do you take Visa? Of course, no problem. Could I take the number, please? Sure, it's four six double seven. Double three, double four, two 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 one, four double five, and the expiry date is August, two thousand and nine. Thank you. So, just to confirm, that's one ticket to Lisbon, flying out on May the twenty fourth at six fifty, and returning on May the thirty first at seventeen thirty. The total cost is fifty-five pounds, including taxes. Okay. Check-in opens two hours before takeoff, and closes half an hour before. Okay. Just one more thing. Could I have an aisle seat? You can choose your seat when you check in. Obviously, it's best to check in as early as possible. Right. Okay. Listening forty one. We use the same software, a system called Nurek, to control all the production processes. Nurek. Yeah. Have you worked with it before? No, I haven't used that one. I've used、uh, TP Control. Right. We used that here a few years ago. So, 
Did you use TP in Cape Town? Yeah. Then when I was in Boston, we used a system called Arrow. Oh, I've worked with that before. We have so many different types of software in this company. It's unbelievable. I know, and we've changed so many times as well. Have you ever used Conductor? Conductor? No, I've never heard of it. That was the system they had when I joined. It was very good, actually. That's the trouble, isn't it? These things change all the time, but do they really improve? Listening forty-two, one. Have you ever used this program? Two. I've worked for several large companies. Three. I haven't worked with him before. Listening forty-three, one. Bean. Two. Made. Three. Found. Four. Had. Five. Written. Six. Done. Seven. Gone. Eight. Flown. Nine. Taken. Ten. Sent. Eleven. Seen. L listening forty four. Eve Cordier. Eve, it's Andy Bell. Andy, hi. How are things? Going quite well. Is everything nearly ready? Well, we've got a full accounts department. I interviewed someone on Monday, and she's accepted the post. Sarah Bernard. I've already sent her details through to personnel. So uh, that's gone well. Okay, good. And what about the IT system? Have they installed that yet? Well, that's more difficult.、Um... I found two technicians so far,、uh, but unfortunately, I haven't found the third person we need. So, so you haven't finished the IT installation? No,、uh, we we haven't actually started it yet. But you haven't started it yet, Andy. We need to open that office in two weeks. I know. I've spoken to Daniela in the Zurich office, and she's going to send someone next week. I think we can still open on time. We need to. How long is it going to take for you? Listening forty-five. One. Have you opened the office yet? Two. Have you hired an accounts assistant yet? Three. Have they installed the IT system yet? Listening forty-six. This is amazing. This article in the paper. Somebody's planning to do a parachute jump from space. From space? Yeah. An Australian. He's going to jump from a balloon from forty thousand meters. So that's what forty kilometers. That's pretty high. When I did my jump, it was from one thousand meters. You've done a parachute jump. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Listening forty-seven. You've done a parachute jump. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. When? About four years ago. A group of us went from my last company. Wow, I'm impressed. So, what was it like? Fantastic! When you jump out of the plane, it's it's just amazing. You weren't too scared then. I was before I jumped. Everyone's frightened before their first jump, but as soon as your parachute opens, it's it's actually quite relaxing. You're just there in the air. You've got this incredible view. Yeah, I bet. And what about the landing? It was okay. 
Not too hard. Because that's the most dangerous moment, isn't it? Well, yeah. Even if you jump without a parachute, it's not dangerous until you land. <laughs> oh, no. Good point. <laughs> Listening 48. 1. It was amazing! 2. It was incredible! 3. It was fantastic! 4. It was terrible! 5. It was awful! Listening 49. It's been an excellent start to the year for GeoCore. Your share price has risen by 42% in the first quarter of this year. Not a bad performance. The S&P 500 has fallen by 3% so far this year. Yes, we're obviously very happy with the results we've had. Our profit has increased by 26% this quarter, which is better than we forecast. Our forecast was for a 20% increase. What's the main reason for that? I think simply it's because demand has been very strong. Our sales have been good. Um, the oil price has risen. Uh... Obviously, your company doesn't sell oil. You're an exploration company. You work for oil companies and, and look for new oil reserves. That's right. But what do high oil prices mean for your business? Well, prices are high because, basically, there isn't enough oil to meet demand. That means we need to find more, which is our job. So, rising oil prices are certainly good news for us. And looking to the future, do you think that the price of oil will go up? Listening 50. A. Lend. B. Borrow. C. Inflation. D. Mortgage. E. Debt. F. Recession. G. Unemployment. H. Interest rate. I. Crash. J. Boom. Listening 51. How important are property prices in the economy? In the UK, most people invest most of their money in their house, so property prices are extremely important. Mm. What's your view on the UK property market? Do you think prices are too high? Well, in recent years, prices have gone up 10 to 20 percent a year, uh, in some years even more. But inflation has been just 2 or 3 percent a year, so I think it's clear that um, the boom has to end. Mm. The last property market crash in the UK was in the late 1980s, and it put the UK economy into a recession. Do you think the same thing will happen again? I don't think prices will crash. The, the economic situation was different in the late 80s. Interest rates rose quite fast just before property prices fell. Today, the Bank of England is much more careful with, with changes in interest rates. Mm. Uh, the other important difference, I think, is that then unemployment was quite high. Today, it's very low, about 5%. So the economic situation is completely different. So I don't think prices will crash, but it is possible they'll fall a little bit or stay at the same level for a few years. Banks have lent people a lot of money in recent years. People have got big mortgages. Do you think that'll be a problem? Will people have less money to spend in the future? Oh, certainly. Because the loans haven't just been mortgages. People have also borrowed money to spend in the shops. So far, that's helped the economy because spending has been high. But at the end of the day, people will have to pay the money back. So I think we'll see lower consumer spending over the next few years. 
Listening 52. So, is your hotel okay? Did you sleep well? Yes, fine, thanks. I watched TV for a while, then had an early night. I watched a bit of that quiz show, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? The French version. Ah, really? It's exactly the same as in the UK. <laughs> the studio, the music. Yes, I think a lot of those kinds of shows are the same. Do you have The Weakest Link? It's a quiz show, and the presenter's really horrible to the contestants. Oh, yes. Yes, it's the same in France. I've seen the English version as well, on satellite TV. And do you have programs like Big Brother? You know, with people living in a house and there are cameras filming all the time. Uh, yes, we had a similar thing a few years ago. Do you have that program... Um, in France, it's called Star Academy. Uh, with people who want to be pop stars and uh, people vote. Um... Yeah, it's called Fame Academy in England. Mm. There have been so many things like that on television in the last few years. Reality TV. Reality TV, mm. yeah. It's been the same in France. At home, I have satellite TV and I get English... Listening 53. At home I have satellite TV and I get English programs on BBC Prime. They show things like quiz shows, documentaries, comedy programs. I find comedies quite difficult to understand. Yeah, I bet. Uh, there's a talk show as well where they interview famous people I think the presenter's very well known in Britain. His name's, um, oh. Michael Parkinson? Yes! <laughs> uh, they also show some good children's programs. My Little Boy Watches Teletubbies. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's another thing I sometimes watch. What's the name for the type of program? It's about not real people, they're actors, but about uh, just everyday life in a street or... Um, a soap opera or a soap. That's it. There's a soap about the people who live in a, uh, a square in London. I, I can't remember. Not EastEnders. EastEnders. That's <laughs> it. Oh, what's so funny? <laughs> Valerie, I can't believe you watch EastEnders in Paris. Actually, I'd like to watch more films in English. On French TV, when they show American films, the voices are in French. How do you say that? They're dubbed. Dubbed? Yeah. Mm, they're nearly always dubbed in French. On some channels, they show the original film with, you know, text at the bottom of the screen with the, with the translation. With subtitles? Subtitles, yeah. But I don't like that because you read, but you don't really listen to... L listening 54. So first, let's look at our present advertising strategy. How are we promoting the brand at the moment? As you know, we advertise in the press. Most of our press ads are in magazines read by the 18 to 24 age group. We also use adverts on billboards. We occasionally use TV commercials. And of course, we market the brand with sponsorship in sports. We sponsor basketball, snowboarding and surfing. At the moment, our spending on advertising is high as a percentage of sales. The reason for that is the cost of TV commercials. But the problem is, to make TV commercials work, you need a lot of them. A lot more than we have at present. Now, obviously, we don't have the budget for that. So, in my opinion, TV commercials are not the right strategy for Sway. But that doesn't mean we can't advertise on TV. We can. The way to do it, more cheaply, is to use product placement. 
The way product placement Listening 55. 1. Advertising. Advertise. 2. Marketing. Market. 3. Promotion. Promote. 4. Sponsorship. Sponsor. L listening 56. So the products are seen in films and TV programs. They're just seen on a table or... That's right. Or in our case, with clothes, they're worn by an actor. Um... And you see the logo? Sometimes, yeah. It depends. You can't always control what happens. Often, products are given to the film company for free, so you know an actor is going to, to wear your jacket, for example, but you don't know if you'll actually see the logo. So you can't say to the film company, we want to see this part of the jacket, or...? <laughs> well, you can, but then usually you have to pay. Sometimes the film company is paid by the advertiser, and then you have more control. I mean, sometimes the name of a product is said by an actor, but that's in a film. You're talking big money for that sort of thing. Yeah, I bet. And when did companies start doing this? I guess it's done more now than in the past. I think the first placements were used in films in the 1960s for cigarettes. But the big business really started in the 80s. I think the best placement, though, was, um, did you see Forrest Gump? The Apple placement was done very well in that. For Apple computers? Yeah. There's a scene where Forrest Gump gets a letter from Apple. L Listening 57. The business has done well over the last three years, and I think now's the right time to expand, to open a new office, hire some good people, hire a manager to help me, and, you know, become a bigger organisation. So I need to raise finance, and to do that, I'd like to try and find some people who want to buy shares in the company. Right, so you're not planning to borrow the money? No. And to expand quickly, I need more than just money. I need your advice on how to manage the expansion. OK. Well, you're certainly right to recruit a manager for the new office. I'm sure you know what it's like to work hard seven days a week. Mm. Obviously, you're an entrepreneur. You set up the company. But as the organisation grows each year, your job changes gradually. If you open a new office, obviously that's a big change. So your job needs to change significantly. Sure. Have you thought about your future with the company? You mean, do I want to sell the whole business? <laughs> no, that's not what I mean. It's just that if I find you some investors, they'll want some management control. It won't really be your business anymore. You understand what I'm getting? Sure, getting. sure. It's not a decision you can make easily, but you need to think about your future carefully. Listening 58. 1. Careful. Carefully. Two. Easy. Easily. Three. Gradual. Gradually. Four. Significant. Significantly. Listening 59. One. I think the best thing about the Internet is the fact that you can find information so easily. You know, you type a keyword into a search engine and you get a huge list of websites. The worst thing is the problem of viruses. You certainly need antivirus software. And you've got to keep it up to date as well. Keep downloading and installing updates. But it's not too much trouble to find a program. 
too. It's good that you can manage your bank accounts via the internet. That saves a lot of time. Once you've registered, you just put in your password, log in, and you've got access to all your accounts and everything from home. It's um, it's good. I think it took a long time before people were confident with um, secure servers with the security side of it, but now it's it's just part of everyday life. It's like paying by credit card online. Three. I'm a member of an investment website, which is part of an investment magazine. I pay ten pounds a month, and I get access to articles from the current issue, and I can search for articles from previous issues as well. They show current share prices, so you can follow your portfolio. Each time you just log in with a username. And a password, and it automatically lists your shares, shows the current price. Listening sixty. Register. Server. Member. User. Listening sixty one. Okay, so our objective is to think of some new ideas. How could we make the product better? What areas of the product could we improve? Any suggestions? What about changing the packaging? We could change the material. Yeah, packaging material. Okay. How about changing the size of the CD? No, the pack. Why don't we sell more CDs in a pack, for example? Okay, yeah. So, bigger packs. Well, they could be smaller as well. Why not sell big boxes, big storage boxes with lots of CDs in them? Then you wouldn't need packaging. So that would be a new product, a storage box. We could sell CDs with numbers printed on them, say from one to a hundred. Then you wouldn't need to write on the CD. You could make a note of what was on each CD number. And then find it easily.、Mm. So we could sell, say, packs of ten. So you would have one to ten, or eleven to twenty, and so on. That's a good idea. We could use that idea with the storage box. So we could produce a big plastic box with, say, a hundred blank CDs in it, with the CDs numbered one to a hundred.、Mm, that's a, that's an interesting idea. Listening sixty-two. Let's think about packaging and storing CDs. Okay. What would happen if you made packaging from water? You could only use water if you froze CDs in ice. Obviously, you couldn't use ice for packaging CDs to sell in shops. No, but let's think about the possible advantages of putting CDs in ice. If you stored them in ice, it would protect them from fire or thieves. You could store important data safely on CD-ROMs in big blocks of ice. You could build an ice data bank for storing data safely and permanently. And if it was in a cold country, it wouldn't be expensive. Listening sixty-three. If we did that, we'd have problems. If we used plastic, we could make it lighter. Listening sixty-four. People often say that some nationalities are more polite than others. Do you think that's true? And do you think you have to be more or less polite when you work with people from different cultures? You don't have to be more or less polite. I think it's more a question of how direct people are. You should always be polite. It's just that in some cultures it's okay to be direct, and in others, um, it's not. For example, in Germany, in business, it's best to be very direct. 
Generally, people ask direct questions and they like direct answers. But in the UK, generally, people are less direct, aren't they? Well, they're not afraid to say they disagree or, or to criticize suggestions. You don't have to say you agree all the time. But, you know, people say things like, I'm not sure I agree, or maybe it would be better to do it another way. I've always found in different cultures, the best way to disagree or, or criticize ideas is to make it clear you're criticizing the suggestion. You shouldn't criticize the person. In Japan, it's very important not to criticize people, isn't it? Yes. You should never criticize anyone directly. It's, for the Japanese, it's very impolite. That's why often in companies in Japan, people have to make decisions in groups. Everyone has to agree. So what's your general advice? Do you think people should change the way they communicate in different cultures? Or, or should you just be yourself? I think you should always be yourself, um, but I think to be successful, you need to change how you say things. Listening 65. 1. We should act now. 2. You should ask Mike about that. 3. We should invest in a new factory. Listening 66. 1. One suggestion is we could close the old plant and move everything to a new site. I think we should consider that option. It's a possibility. 2. There would be a lot of benefits if we had just one plant. It would be better... Uh, it will be easier to manage supplies and deliveries. Energy costs would be another advantage. 3. We know how much we would save if we had a new production line. We've all read the report and seen the figures for that. And from the forecasts, we know more or less... 4. I think one large plant looks like a good option. That's my first impression. 5. OK, shall we sum up then? I think we've made quite good progress. We've got quite a long list of ideas. I think we should just consider two or three proposals. So let's look at the list. 6. I don't think it would be a good idea to spend so much. I'm worried about the economic situation. I think it's too uncertain. So, what would you recommend? Let's just talk about disadvantages for the moment. I just wouldn't recommend such a big investment. We have to be careful. Listening 67. 1. I think we should consider that option. It's a possibility. 2. There would be a lot of benefits if we just had one plant. 3. I think we should just consider two or three proposals. 4. I don't think it would be a good idea to spend so much. 5. I'm worried about the economic situation. I think it's too uncertain. 6. I just wouldn't recommend such a big investment. Listening 68. Hello. Hello. I've uh, just missed my connection to London. I was booked on the 9.30. I just want to check if my ticket's valid for the next train at half past ten. Um... Ah, yes, you're OK. Obviously, you won't have a seat reservation. No. Is it too late to make one? Mm, I'm afraid so. Will it be busy? It's usually quite busy, yeah. You'll probably get a seat in first class if you want to change your ticket. Would I have to cancel this ticket? Would I get a refund or...? You can just upgrade it. 
you just pay a supplement. I can check how much it would cost. Um, oh, no, it's OK. I don't think my company would pay my expenses in first class. Ah. <laughs> OK, thanks. Oh, is the 10.30 on time, by the way? Um, it's running four minutes late. OK, thanks. Listening 69. 1. Cancellation. 2. Catch. 3. Connection. 4. Check in. 5. Change. 6. Reservation. Listening 70. 1. I'm afraid your ticket's not valid on this train. Isn't it? I thought I could use it on any train. No, it's only valid on trains leaving after 10 a.m. Oh, I didn't realise. The fare's a bit higher on the earlier trains. It's not a big difference. OK, so can I just pay the extra? Yes. I'll just check how much it is. Two. We regret to inform passengers that flight TL749 to Geneva has been cancelled due to a technical problem. Flight TL749 to Geneva is cancelled. Passengers for this flight should check in at gate 9D and await a transfer to the next flight to Zurich. Three. Good morning. Morning. I checked in yesterday evening. My room's booked for a second night for tonight, but I need to stay in town a third night. Um, tomorrow night. I've got another meeting which wasn't planned. Could I book my room for an extra night? Hmm, I'm afraid we're full tomorrow night. Um, just a moment. I'll see if there's a room free at our other hotel. It's just a few minutes walk from here. If that's... Yeah, that's fine. Hello, Paul. It's Alex. Have you got a single room free tomorrow night? OK, great. Can you hold it for me? I'll phone you back with the details. Thanks. OK, that's booked. Excellent. Listening 71. A key question when you start to design a high-speed train is how wide is the track? What's the distance between the rails? Because the width of the track doesn't just give you the width of the train. The height of the train is also limited by the width of the track. Obviously, trains have to be stable, especially if they have to go round curves quite fast. Tall, narrow designs are unstable. So for better stability, a wide track is better. The trouble with standard tracks is they're quite narrow. For high-speed trains, this is a problem if there are a lot of curves in the line. Now you can limit the problem. To help the train stay on the track, you make it quite heavy. And you put most of the weight as low as possible, below the floor. Now, of course, a design that's very heavy isn't very efficient. Just look at the big, thick pieces of steel used in trains um, to get an idea of how much weight there is. So it's very inefficient. And another problem, of course, that you have to deal with... Listening 72. One. How wide is the track? What's the distance between the rails? Two. The height of the train is also limited by the width of the track. Three. 
so for better stability, a wide track is better. 4. To help the train stay on the track, you make it quite heavy. 5. Just look at the big, thick pieces of steel used in trains. Listening 73. 1. Wide. Width. 2. Narrow. Shallow. 3. Height. Weight. 4. Around. Through. 5. Length. Depth. 6. Thickness. Less. Listening 74. OK. Let's make a list of dangers on the tarmac. And then we can make a list of safety precautions to help prevent accidents. So, first of all, what are the main hazards? Any suggestions? Planes, when they're moving. OK. Uh, moving planes. Noise from engines, uh, from the jets. You need to wear ear protection. Uh-huh, OK. Noise, ear protection. Other vehicles moving around? OK, good. Moving vehicles. They are the biggest hazard on the tarmac. Not planes, but vehicles. Buses, trucks, cars. Mm. What precautions can you take to help avoid accidents, to prevent ground vehicles hitting people? Uh, everyone should wear a green jacket. OK. High visibility clothing. Essential. Does anyone know why moving vehicles are especially dangerous at airports? Because they drive around quite fast? They often do, yeah. They're not allowed to, though. The health and safety regulations say that every employee is responsible for the safety of others. But there's another reason why moving vehicles are particularly hazardous at airports. Any other ideas? Because you can't hear them. Because of all the noise from jets and... Um... Exactly. If you're standing near a plane with its engines running, you can't always hear vehicles coming. Just now, someone said you need to wear ear protection. For some jobs, for example, if you have to stand in front of moving planes to guide the pilots, then yes, you need to protect your ears. But only some people need ear protection some of the time. So how do we know if we need ear protection or not? Are there standard procedures? Yes, we'll look at those a bit later on. Listening 75 A lot of people have to think about safety regulations in their jobs, but for pilots, safety is extremely important, isn't it? Absolutely. It's all about procedures, in fact. Pilots must know exactly what to do in all situations. Obviously, you need a lot of experience. Yes. To get an airline pilot's licence, you need a minimum number of hours flying time. You must have at least 1,500 hours. And you must be at least 23 years old. Obviously, most professional pilots are a lot older than that. Sure. And do all pilots have to be able to speak English? Is that a requirement? Yes, to fly internationally. What are the main safety procedures you have to follow? Are there certain things that are especially important? We have a lot of checklists. There are things you must always check before each flight. You mustn't take off until you've checked everything. The first thing is you walk around the plane, outside, and check that, you know, nothing's broken or cracked. <laughs> that there are no cracks in the wings. <laughs> Actually, most planes have cracks in their wings. Very, very small ones. It's perfectly safe. Right. And apparently you can still land if an engine breaks down, can't you? You can take off if an engine breaks down. If it happens a few seconds before takeoff, um, if you're above a certain speed, the procedure is you mustn't try to stop because the runway isn't long enough. 
So you take off, fly around the airport, and then land again. Listening 76. 1. Hello. Hello. I'd like some information about the gym. The health and fitness club? Yes. Is it open to everyone? Can anyone go in? Yes, sure. And is that where the sauna is? There is a sauna in the health and fitness club, yes. There's another on deck C, next to the swimming pool as well. OK. OK, thanks very much. You're welcome. Two. Hi. Good morning. I think there's a problem with the TV in my room. I can't switch it on for some reason. Have you put the card in? The card? I didn't see a card with it. Um... Right. Uh, you need a card. There's a small charge if you want TV. It's $18 for the full 10-day cruise. $18? Yes. You just need to sign a form, then we give you a card, and you put it in the TV. You get all the major satellite channels, sir. Three. Excuse me, I've just read the poster over there about the show in the, um, Laguna Bar tomorrow night. It says you need to book. Are there any tickets left? Yes. OK. And how much are they? Uh, they're free. It's just it's usually quite popular, so we prefer to issue tickets. Then people aren't disappointed if they don't get a seat. Right. OK, so can I book two seats, please? Sure. Can I take your room number? Listening 77. 1. Hello. I'd like some information about the gym. 2. Is it open to everyone? Can anyone go in? 3. I think there's a problem with the TV in my room. Four. Are there any tickets left? Five. And how much are they? Six. OK, so can I book two seats, please? Listening 78. <laughs> OK, shall we make a start? Uh, just to say, John Gates can't make it. He sends his apologies. He's had to go to an urgent meeting with a customer. John's asked me to chair the meeting, so I'm in the hot seat. OK, first, has everyone got an agenda? John told me copies were circulated on Monday. I got the agenda, but I didn't get a copy of the minutes from the meeting last week. The meeting last week? John told me you all met last week to talk about the conference. I didn't attend. I wasn't here last week, so I don't know what... Oh, that. You... No, we didn't hold a meeting. We didn't take minutes or anything. It was just some of us had a talk during a coffee break. Oh, OK. <laughs> don't worry, you didn't miss anything. So, we've called this meeting to talk about the sales conference next January. We need to look at the programme to plan what we're going to do during the two days. So, let's look at the first item on the agenda, then. The main theme for the conference. As you know, each year we have a theme. Listening 79. 1. At. Attend. 2. It. Item. 3. Old. Hold. 4. Late. Circulate. 5. Log. Apologies. Listening 80. Discussion A. I can speak to Sam Wu in Beijing and see if he can give a talk about Chinese culture. I can contact Mai Cheng as well. OK, great. I'll call them as soon as we finish. Discussion B. So, before we decide, I'll visit all three hotels. 
And we definitely don't want to use the conference centre we used last time. No, I think everyone agreed that it wasn't up to scratch. Discussion C. So we're saying the last week in January. But, um, we won't book until we get replies from the branches. No, I think we need to ask everyone just to be sure. Discussion D. Just before we finish, there's just one thing that's not on the agenda. Tom Watts emailed me to say he wants to organise some gifts for everyone who attends. What sort of gifts? I don't know. He didn't say. I'll ask him when I speak to him tomorrow. I need to phone him. Listening 81. 1. Agreed. He agreed to help. 2. Refused. They refused to do it. 3. Promised. She promised to send it. Listening 82. Hello. Hello, George. It's Victoria. How are you? Oh, not too bad. I'm just calling about the quotes from the three hotels for the conference. Have you got copies of all of them? Um, yes. Uh, yeah, they're here on my uh, desk somewhere. Could you email them to me? Um, I can fax them. I've only got hard copies. I haven't got the files in the computer, so... Um... OK, fine. I've got to go to a meeting in about a quarter of an hour, so I'll send them now. Yeah, OK. There's no rush. This afternoon's fine if, um... No, no, it's no problem. I'll send them now. OK, great. Then maybe we can discuss them later today. Sure. I'll be in the office all afternoon. OK. I'll call you later this afternoon, then. OK. Listening 83. So, I've looked at the three quotes from all three hotels, and obviously we visited all three as well. Um, and I think the best place is the Dali. Yeah, I agree. The trouble is, it's the most expensive. Yeah. Their price is, what, 10% higher than the other two? Hmm. It is their first offer, though. I haven't negotiated with them yet. No. Could you try to get a better price from them? I can try, yeah. I'll call the manager in the morning. Um, what's her name? Heidi Wells. Tell her you've spoken to your boss and uh, tell her I said they can have the contract if they can give us a 10% discount. And why don't I show her the offers from the other hotels? I, I can go and see her and take the quotes with me. That's probably better than phoning. Yeah, OK. And what if she says they can't give us 10% but they can give, I don't know, 5%? Well, do your best to get 10%. If she offers you 5% or whatever, then tell her you'll have to speak to me again. Tell her you can accept 10% immediately, but if not, you'll have to get back to me. OK, fine. I'll phone her now and see if I can arrange a meeting tomorrow. Right. I'll give John Gates a call and give him an update, tell him what our strategy is. So I'll give you a call um, after I've met Heidi Wells tomorrow. Right. OK. Well, good luck. Thanks. Bye. Listening 84. 1. Hi, Tom. Hi, Amelia. How are you? Very well, thanks. How are you? Fine, thank you. Sorry I'm late. That's OK. My train was delayed. Oh, the trains here are never on time. 2. Hello. Hello. Uh, I've come for a meeting with Amelia Donovan. My name's Tom Watts. I'm afraid I'm a little bit late. I'll give her a call. Amelia, Tom Watts is in reception. OK. She'll be with you in a moment, if you'd like to have a seat. Thanks. Three. We've made good progress there. Yeah. We're about halfway through the agenda. It's quite hot in here. Do you mind if I open the window? No, not at all.
Shall we take a break? Yes, good idea. We can go out and get some fresh air if you like. We can walk across to the cafeteria and get a coffee over there. 4. Okay. This is my office. Off to you. Thank you. Shall I take your coat? Yes, thank you. Here you are. Thanks. Can I get you anything to drink? Coffee? Tea? No, I'm fine, thanks. We can start straight away if you like. I'll give you a coffee. Listening 85 It's a beautiful day. Yeah. It's been hot like this all week. It'll probably last until Friday, then rain all weekend. <laughs> yeah. So, how was your trip? You said your train was delayed. Yeah, it left on time, but then we stopped at a station somewhere. They said we had to wait for another train coming from the south. Listening 86. Would you like a CC software company lolly? A what? <laughs> a company lollipop. They're gifts for the conference. Oh, I see. Here you are. Thanks. Company lollipops? I give them to all my customers. Really? Sure. They're quite popular in the States. As business gifts. Oh, yes? So they're not your idea, then? N no, I just bought them. Oh, right. They're in the company colors. So, what flavor are they? <laughs>